quantitative non-experimental research design. So we have here non-experimental quantitative research design. These are um, design, these designs, um, our variables under these designs are not deliberately manipulated and the setting also is not controlled. So researchers only collect data without making changes or introducing treatments. So there's no treatments here, unlike in our experimental research design. So data that are observed or obtained under non-experimental research design are analyzed as is, and the results may lead to the formation of hypotheses that can be later on tested experimentally. So what are the examples of non-experimental quantitative research design? So we have five examples under non-experimental, the descriptive design, correlational or the ex post facto, the developmental research design, the epidemiological research design, and the survey research design. Moving forward, this is the first non-experimental quantitative research design. This is called the descriptive research design. So the phenomenon that is being studied occurs in natural setting without imposing any control or manipulation. You just choose the phenomenon, you just choose the setting without changing anything so that you can get the most natural description out of it. This descriptive research design, guys, is used to develop theories, identify problems with current practices. It reviews the current practices and help find loopholes and to make it improved in the long run. It can also justify current practices like clinical practices or like our standard of care, in other words. It also allows make judgment or determine what practices are doing in similar situations. So that is the, the relevance of our descriptive research design. Under our descriptive research design, we have univariant, we have exploratory, and we have comparative. For the univariant descriptive design, the studies are undertaken to describe the frequency of occurrence of a phenomenon rather than to study relationship. Again, it describes frequency, how often the phenomenon occurs. For example, a researcher is interested in assessing the experiences of patients suffering with rheumatoid arthritis. So you want to know who among the 500, 500 respondents suffering with rheumatoid arthritis, how many people commonly experience the specific symptoms under RA. So you will be able to have a univariant or a single a single type of data which is frequency another type of our descriptive design is the exploratory so you investigate the phenomenon and its related factors about which is not much known for example an exploratory study to assess the multifactorial dimensions of fall and home safety measures for elderly people living in selected areas in your in your locality so we we always uh, um consider fall as a an accident or home safety measure as a standard of of standard in our living but we don't know, we don't have any, um, any knowledge or we have limited knowledge on the factors that affects fall because we just, we just determine the, the cause of fall such as um, the 
the logistics of the house, the structure itself. But behind that, there are multifactorial factors or dimensions, such as the occurrence of stroke, or such as um, um, embolism, embolic stroke, or heart attacks, or we have also brittle bones for elderly, osteoporosis. So there are a lot of risk factors to fall, and we don't. We want to explore it also in pharmacy setting we want to know what drugs can contribute to occurrence of unexpected fall among elderly or among different population so what drugs can make a can make a person drowsy or can make a person fall asleep rapidly so those can be those those drugs can be um, one reason to fall and can be considered as a dimension that we can explore under this area, under this research topic. So that is called exploratory descriptive design. The next one under descriptive is the comparative descriptive design. So you compare occurrence of a phenomenon in two or more groups. For example, you compare people living in the urban area versus people living in the rural area. There might be this discrimination to that, but you want to check what are the factors that makes our people living in the urban area more healthier or more sicker over the people living in the rural area. Another comparative study that you can do is to compare the knowledge with our female versus male or the practices, female versus male. So that can be done according to the specific research topic that is um, applicable and scientifically sound too. 